Hello everyone. Today I will touch the subject of intermittent fasting and weight loss. Is intermittent fasting better for weight loss than a conventional diet? This is quite a sensitive subject these days because there are so many people that are like spreading intermittent fasting as the be all and all diet and uh, trying it in the last seven years. I discovered that the truth is around in the middle because there are just too many people that are saying yeah just uh, do this secret uh, type of uh, training program and uh, apply my super secret uh, strategy of intermittent fasting in my own way and uh, the weight loss will be faster i literally read all books on intermittent fasting that came out and uh, they are just basically saying the same thing the same old thing about intermittent fasting as as being better for fat loss, at improving body composition. But what most people fail to add is proper research studies that show this. So I thought about how could I explain in the easiest way possible what research has to say about these types of intermittent fasting and show it to you. So I created a whiteboard video and uh, I hope you like it. Let's start with whole day fasting. A whole day fasting strategy involves fasting for 1-2 days a week for at least 24 hours. Harvey et al. compared the effectiveness of whole day fasting with normal caloric restricted diet for weight loss, insulin sensitivity and other metabolic disease risk markers from two groups. The first group was a whole day fasting group that had two fasting days of around 647 calories per day for 2 days a week and the control group that had a daily caloric intake of around 1500 calories per day. They controlled the weekly energy deficit over a 6 month period and made sure the deficit was equal between both groups. He saw no difference in body fat reduction between the whole day fasting group and the control group over the period of 6 months. The conclusion, whole day fasting is an effective dieting strategy for weight loss as long as you create a weekly caloric deficit and you don't suffer from an eating disorder condition. Let's go to the next one. Alternate day fasting. This is the most studied method of fasting. Alternate day fasting typically involves a 24 hour fasting window followed by a 24 hour feeding window. The main premise behind this type of dieting is to create a big caloric deficit on the fasting days but also to not compensate with more calories on the feeding days. So you can still maintain an overall caloric deficit. What about weight loss with alternate day fasting? Catenacci et al. compared the alternate day fasting with a normal caloric restricted diet. He compared the changes in weight, body composition, lipids and insulin sensitivity of alternate day fasting with those produced by a normal weight loss diet with moderate daily caloric deficit. They took 26 people and split them into two groups. One group of 14 people was put on a zero calorie alternate day fasting diet and the other group of 12 people was put on a daily caloric restriction of around 400 calories. Both groups did this for 8 weeks. At the end of those 8 weeks there was no statistical significance between both groups in terms of weight loss and body composition. The alternate day fasting group lost 8.2 plus minus 0.9 kilograms and the normal dieting group lost 7.1 plus minus 1 kilogram. There was a follow up where scientists gathered the people after 24 weeks to check if they regained their weight lost back and they saw no difference in weight regain between those two groups. The conclusion, alternate day fasting causes similar weight loss as with a normal dieting strategy and does not appear to cause weight regain. And the last one is the most popular method of intermittent fasting, the 16-20 hours fast with a 4-8 hour eating window. Simon et al. published one of the largest review on intermittent fasting. This review was formed from 40 studies in total from which 12 of them looked at the effect of intermittent fasting on weight loss and compared it with a normal caloric restricted diet. They found out that both of these diets 
resulted on similar changes in body composition and weight loss. So here you have it. As research says, intermittent fasting does not stroke the metabolic furnace, it doesn't cause increased fat loss, it doesn't really improve your body composition without a proper caloric deficit. If intermittent fasting makes it easier for you to diet and to stay on a caloric deficit, then by all means do it. But if it doesn't and uh, it's hard for you to maintain a certain fasting and feeding windows, then I will suggest you to just go with a normal diet. Just maintain a caloric deficit and you should be fine. I don't believe the people that are saying that intermittent fasting is uh, increasing fat loss and it's the best type of diet because uh, it makes you lean and muscular and uh, you don't have to stay on a caloric deficit or count your calories because that's not true. And if you don't trust uh, what research has to say about intermittent fasting, I also have my own story. I tried intermittent fasting long before it was even marketed so highly. In the last seven years, I literally tried every kind of fasting protocols and compared them with, with a normal dieting strategy. And uh, I too observed that there's no difference between uh, maintaining a caloric deficit with intermittent fasting or maintaining it with a normal diet. So, in my case, because I'm subscribed to the saying, if it fits your lifestyle, I don't really do intermittent fasting anymore. Because I don't like to impose myself fasting and feeding windows. And if you want to be flexible, just like me, eat your meals whenever you feel the need to eat them. So, if you like my video and uh, it helps you understand intermittent fasting and weight loss better, and if you like my style of explaining uh, the research with the whiteboard videos, just subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. And this will encourage me to do more videos, just like this one. Bye.